There's actually been a number of FLT3 inhibitors in recent years that have shown some activity in FLT3 immune AML as monotherapy. Unfortunately, all these inhibitors have been associated invariably with a short duration of response and inevitable relapse. And what we are interested in looking at is what are these mechanisms. The, the most well-known mechanism actually, and actually all of the ones that have been described in the clinic are cell intrinsic, largely um, due to uh, mutations that are acquired in the FLT3 kinase domain that impair drug binding. The first generation of truly um, clinically active FLT3 inhibitors um, were um, the type one in, or type two inhibitors such as quizartinib. And we conducted a study a number of years ago that predicted mutations within the FLT3 kinase domain that could confer resistance to quizartinib. And the most common of these was a particular mutation, mutations that occurred at a particular residue, the D835 residue, that caused constitutive kinase activation. And type two inhibitors being only able to bind to the inactive conformation of the kinase were inevitably resistant to this mutation. And so there's been actually been a lot of work over the last several years in developing inhibitors that are able to bind to the active kinase conformation and have activity against these D835 mutations. There's been two over the recent years that have been developed and have shown activity as monotherapy. The first of these is crinolinib, and then the most active um, of the two is actually gilteritinib, or ASP2215. And we and others have conducted some studies in patients who have relapsed on both of these drugs. And it seems like the, unlike with the type two inhibitors, the major mechanism of relapse on these drugs are actually off target, so not mediated by reactivation of FLT3 kinase signaling via kinase domain mutations. Actually, that's the minority of um, the, the causes of relapse. And instead, there's a couple of off target mechanisms um, so one is that you can actually acquire an, uh, another signaling mutation that um, allows, such as NRAS, that allows the um, leukemia to again take off. But we also see this uh, mechanism of what we call clone swap or clone switch, in which actually the FLT3 ITD-driven clone goes down, but then there's emergence of a new clone, such as the NRAS clone, or actually in one case, a bcr able um, driven clone. And this has actually been previously reported by other groups. The other thing that we've noticed is that in any individual patient, we've been able to show this with single cell um, sequencing, is that in, any, in, in individual patients, they can actually be coexistence of on-target and off-target mechanisms, suggesting that tumor heterogeneity actually plays a large part in resistance to these drugs. So in terms of the future, really the more important thing that we need to do is actually figure out what are the right therapeutic combinations to add FLT3 inhibitors to, or what are the right drugs to combine FLT3 inhibitors with so that we can really take care of tumor heterogeneity and really improve response rates and eventually cure.